Hello everyone, you are listening to The Redshift, your connection to your piece of the sky. I'm your host, Emma Miller. Hello, hello everyone. How is everyone doing this week? Hi John John, hi Tesla. Hello Karen, how's it going? Brick Bond, hi. Hello friends. I hope you are all having a fantastic uh, day so far and week of course. Uh, special, sh- that's true. A very special shifter. Hello, Sutar and V. Hello, hello. Hi, Shiny Fours. Welcome, friends. All right. I hope you've all had a great week. Um, I am really excited about this week's uh, Redshift. I, I think you can probably tell. I have been so excited to share this, and I have been sitting on some really fun information for a while, so I'm very excited to be here. Hi, Trinity. Uh, With that being said, uh, I think I'm most excited about our sponsor message of the week. And because I'm so excited about the sponsor message, which I personally think is the best sponsor message we've ever had, we're just going to hop right into that. So just kidding. We actually don't need sound for this one. Um, So the ISA sponsor of this week is actually me or, well, Rather, it's us. It's the Redshift. Uh, I know that that kind of sounds maybe a little bit silly um, because it's, you know, our own show. Uh, But hear me out. Hear me out. So the ISA has really, really loved what we're doing here this week. Or, well, all of the weeks. Uh, And they have really loved that you all are so involved uh, every week with what we're doing here on the Redshift. With that being said, uh, the reason I say that we're the sponsor this week is because we are actually helping to launch this very exciting new prototype uh, that you guys might have heard of at this point. We're going to get way more into that as the show goes on, but uh, they've actually helped me to help launch it. Uh, And what that means is that I'm going to be working on creating a video uh, to help explain how uh, this new prototype works and how people can get involved. Our shifters are really at the tip of the spear in testing out the new system, and we're actually going to be playing a party game version of it together at the end of the show, Um, which is also partially why uh, I've been asked to help create the, uh, the video and to have it here on the show. So I hope you are all very, very excited. I am personally incredibly excited because I've had the opportunity to actually test out this prototype before, um, before it released to everyone. Uh, And I just can't wait for you all to experience it as well. It's a really amazing way to truly have your second job on Mars. With that being said, uh, in terms of announcements, um, if you haven't already seen it, Uh, There is one of the most comprehensive bulletins that was posted in the past few days um, that basically shares all of the background information about the founding of the ISA. So if any of you have ever wondered and you don't want to do the research yourself, I know how hard it is sometimes to track down uh, research about different groups. Uh, Now you can learn all about the ISA uh, in that bulletin that they've recently posted. Uh, Learn about our founders and our previous missions and the goals of each of our missions. So really, really fascinating stuff. It was awesome to get to read it. um, And I hope you all have enjoyed that. And then, of course, uh, like I mentioned, uh, there is a very exciting other announcement that you've maybe already seen uh, that really ties in with what our astronaut letter is about. So I kind of think that it's best that we let her tell you about it. Are you all very excited? Do you want to know who wrote the astronaut letter this week? I like the I'm ready gift, shiny. I think that's fantastic. Also, boot copter concept. That's, I love it. I love it. (laughs) Uh, So let's hop into our astronaut letter, uh, which is this week from Ida Serafin. Now, I don't know about you all. I know I am personally very excited to hear from Ida directly uh, since, um, you know, I've been quite curious about uh, hearing from her ever since our very first broadcast uh, with Patricia's letter about the glass. So with that being said, let's hop right in. Keep in mind again, these are all her words and I am just reading them for you. 
My turn. Fine. I will make it fast and I will take some risks. This is who I am. My name is Ida Serafin and I used to race cars. Open wheel racing and also rally. I love the speed, the wind whipping past me, the pull of inertia around the turns. I also love to understand how cars work. When you are trusting yourself to a car like that, you know, or you have to know how it operates. Most races aren't won on the track, but in the garage with the wrench in your hand, teasing every Newton meter of torque out of your engine days before they drop the flag. I never thought I wanted a cookie cutter life, the house with the family, kids running in the yard, a standard job, so slow, so boring. Whatever I do, I always want to go faster, do more. I was racing, I won my share, and winning I like very much. But at the end of the day, why? You do 200 laps around a track just to end up in the same place. I wanted to do more than go fast. I wanted it to matter. My mother was a pilot. We talked one night. She pointed at the moon and the stars and said, you want somewhere to go? Genius. I found my way into the European Space Agency, but they weren't the right team for me. They wanted a standard ESA astronaut. They didn't want Ida. I don't have to be a star, but I have to be myself. They wanted an astronaut who would do maintenance work on Luna Station. Adon Luzariga called me up and said, how would you like to go hang gliding off a mountain three times the size of Everest? That was when I knew I found the right team. For those of you listening to the show and starting this week, you and I can be on the same team. You are the pit crew for the races I'll be running every day until Mission 4 arrives. But before I talk about that, we need a quick pit stop. If we are to be a team, then we need to trust one another. And that means no secrets. There was a certain man, another astronaut. We shared training, we shared our dreams, we shared a bed. Then I was chosen for mission three and he was not. 26 months between launch windows. I mean, you talk about long distance relationship. It's hard to make it work across 60 million kilometers. To be honest, I didn't think it would be hard. I thought I would be so busy with a new world to explore, but after the first few months, I was shocked by how much I missed him. That sounds bad, doesn't it? So surprised. I was always the one other people missed. Ida here and gone in a flash. Well, life makes fools of us all sooner or later. I started counting down those 26 months, week by week, day by day. And then, disaster. He didn't make the cut for mission four. I couldn't believe it. We talked, it would be at least another year or two. I said the right things. I said I was doing well on Mars. I said I wasn't lonely at all. I said if he needed to get on with his life, I would understand. Then one of the other astronauts got injured. My man was back on mission four. I can't tell you how that felt. Listen, it was like some days this week when after months of cold, it gets above freezing and you can actually feel the warmth of the sun on your face. Here on Mars, the pressure is so low that the melting point of water and the boiling point is almost the same. So you see these stains spread across the ground, and then the regolith starts to boil like a pot of red soup as all the ice bubbles underneath steams away. That's how my heart felt when I heard Gareth was coming after all, like the sun was on it and everything that had turned to ice inside me was boiling away. Now that little house I never wanted, I wanted it with him. Those kids running in the yard? Now I thought I would a hundred times rather curl up in a hab with him and a child than go hang gliding off Olympus Mons. I never used to pay much attention to Patricia when she talked about the colony on Mars. I thought I would be here for a while, then on to Titan to explore or in Cladus. But now I started to see it as she did. More homes in the caves, perhaps. Greenhouses, schools. One day she said, with Gareth coming, you might be the first mother on Mars. It hit me like a punch in the chest. Of all the races to win, I had never thought of that one. You must understand you cannot grow up in Italy without spending a lot of time in church to see the Madonna and child in paintings and frescoes and stained glass. A bit of a hellraiser all my life. Could it really be my destiny to be the Madonna of Mars, to be the mother of a new world? I helped Patrizia with her sheet of glass. The next morning, When we went out, CO2 vapor had sublimated and frosted the glass. We played this game to say what we saw like figures in the clouds, and that's what I saw. The Nuncione, the angel coming to Mary to tell her destiny, that she would bear a child, one whose coming would change the world. I told you sooner or later, life makes fools of 
fools of us all. But no greater fool that morning than Ida Serafin. I had made a mistake, a true ISA mistake. Transplanetary, a screw up the size of the solar system. Two months before, when my man was off mission four, remember I had told him to get on with his life? Well, he wasn't supposed to do it, of course. Why would he ever want to share a laugh or a meal with someone who adored him or a bed when instead he could pine for his glamorous girlfriend 60 million kilometers away who said she was fine, who said she didn't miss him at all? That night he called me from the ship, said he had to talk to me, said there was something I deserved to know. There was another woman, a friend, my friend. I introduced them. I won't say her name. We talked. After, I put on a spacesuit. I had to leave the camp. My heart was rotten ice, boiling and steaming, but no longer in a good way. I came to where the glass was, and I saw that Madonna in the frost, and... Well, if you were listening to that episode of The Red Shift, you know what happened next. Patricia knows I broke the glass. On good days now, she will share with me her herbs. More days than she will share them with Alves. One day, I will help her again to make her glass greenhouse here as repayment. I tell you this story because there should be no secrets between a driver and her crew. And starting this week, you are my crew. And finally, we are in the home straight, and I can tell you what the ISA wants me to say. I trained at NVL, of course, helping build rovers and buggies. Then I took them to Red Sand 1. I have all the test speed records and always will because they said I raced them too hard and made us build them slower and safer. Here on Mars, I service the rovers and I drive them too. We have been out looking for ore and ice, taking samples, running them back to base. It is very time consuming, but the ISA has found a way for you to help. If we could use your minds, all working from Earth, to help scan the surface with remotes, then someone like me could be vastly more efficient. We always are in need of more resources, always on the verge of running low. If instead of searching for ice and ore, I was only driving to where you had already found it, how much more efficient it would be. You could be the pit crew, the surveyors. I said, why not? If they think it's worth the shot, if they think it will be a new way for us to gather and explore, let's do it. I'm not a traditional type of person, not a this is how it's been done and this is how it should always be done person. I want to see what is new and push the boundaries. So I have been working for months with the developers of software and technology back on Earth so that you and I can become a team. This has become my special project. The goal was to make it work before the arrival of Mission 4. Because, I tell you bluntly, we are behind schedule. If this doesn't work, we won't have enough rocket fuel manufactured by the time Mission 4 arrives to send the ship home, and the whole project will be delayed. Developing this project has not been easy. Lots of failures. But now, yes, we have something. It works. You and I, we are about to be a team. With your help, we can take this from a base that survives to a colony that thrives. And now there is no more time for me to write. It's back into the rover. But now I have a pit crew of thousands. With you behind me, what race can we not win? There is a planet to explore. There is a world to win. So come drive with me soon. Ciao. How amazing is that, everyone? I'm so excited to share it with you. I'm so excited that you guys all got to hear from Ida herself. Uh, I got a chance to take one of these drives with Ida, like I mentioned. Um, I've been working with the ISA's development side, uh, and the developer that I had been working with uh, got me into the prototype program, uh, and I had a chance to experience all of this firsthand, which was unbelievably cool, uh, and what a great experience. And you all are going to be able to experience that very soon as well. Um, it, it really feels so amazing, honestly, to be able to make a tangible impact uh, in the lives of our astronauts in the colony. What a cool way for us to help make sure that they are able to survive and, like Ida said, to thrive. These are our people, and so being able to support them feels great. Plus, if you don't think too hard about it, it does feel like a game, and I really love winning games. So I got a little bit 
competitive, I would say, with uh, my experience. And I kind of maybe got told by the developers to, to maybe focus a little bit more. <laughs> with that being said, uh, the activity that we're going to be playing as soon as we get back, like I mentioned, is a basically a party game version of uh, what the actual prototype technology is, which is very exciting. We're going to be playing that right after we take our uh, quick break for our weather report, since we don't have a sponsor message uh, to share right now. We already did it. So I'll be right back after the weather. I mean, I share the weather, but we'll be back to the game after the weather. Temperatures remain warm for Mars. Uh, with lows of negative 90 degrees Celsius to highs of plus 5 degrees Celsius. Pressure is up somewhat to 700 Pascal with winds from 5 to 25 meters per second or 20 to 90 kilometers per hour uh, from 210 degrees east of north. Atmospheric opacity is about 0.75. All right. Are you all excited to experience our game? I hope you're all very excited. I know I'm very excited. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to kind of explain how the game is going to work. And then we're going to uh, and then we're going to move on to uh, actually playing the game. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to share with you an image um, and that image is going to be uh, the image that you all are going to be able to look at. The way that this is going to work is going to be similar to a game, think somewhat like Battleship maybe. Um, so I can see the full map. You are only going to get to see a small portion of the map or, or rather a blank map um, so that you'll not be able to see where you're going. And using the emotes that are going to get put onto uh, a message that Stephanie will share, thank you, Stephanie, you're gonna tell me which direction we're gonna move in. Any turn you have, you can move two spaces in whatever one direction you're going in. And you are looking for particular objectives on the map itself. Like I said, you can't see them, but I can. And you will be uh, you will be able to share uh, your decision-making process uh, with us here. Uh, so let me pull up the map and get it to you all. So here's what the map looks like. There's our map. Uh, where video? We don't have any video yet. We'll be posting uh, very soon. So Stephanie will show you what the direction is going to look like. But for the game, for, for this for the purposes of our game today, uh, we're going to be using uh, the image. And you guys are going to be able to work through the image in order to find where you need to go. So one more time. You're going to, uh, when I ask you to answer and tell us which direction, uh, you're going to click on the numbers that Stephanie has laid out and tell me which direction to go. Every time you click a direction, you'll head two tiles in that space. Uh, and then I will give you a, an idea of what is generally surrounding you so you can make a decision if you want to move in whatever your next direction is toward the objectives. There are also some bonuses that you can potentially get that will increase your score. And of course, all of this translates into XP. So for every, for every uh, resource that you find, which is, are your objectives, you're going to get one point, uh, which will translate into XP. If you get two, you get what is the equivalent of two points. And then if you find a bonus, uh, certain bonuses will do certain things. One of the bonuses will actually give you a half point, uh, and one of them will just allow you additional moves in the, in the turn. Hopefully all of this is making sense with you all. Uh, let me uh, share with you also one other document. Uh, let me see. Give me one second. I just need to share our little viewfinder. I'm just pulling it up. I here. 
So this is our map of the view points. So what each one of those numbers that Stephanie has shared uh, means. Uh, on top of all of those things that I've already described, the last thing that's important, and I will make sure that I flag these to you all when you're deciding which direction you're going to go, um, is the uh, there are some hazards. And the hazards will potentially cost you uh, turns. They will potentially um, limit the amount of movement that you can do. Uh, so I will make sure that you know that there are things in the general vicinity of where you're going. Everyone ready? I want to see those emotes. Let's see those emotes saying we're ready. I think we're ready to do it. <laughs> All right. I like the, I like the gifts. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So uh, as I said, you've all seen the map, that initial map. Uh, we'll also be updating with uh, updated maps so that you can keep keep tabs on where you are so that you know where you've been. So looking at that initial map, if you have that up, you are currently six spaces away from one of the nearest resources. Actually, two of the nearest resources. You are five away from one of the nearest resources, and you are seven away from one of the nearest resources. You are also within two tiles of a hazard, uh, and that's all I'll tell you for now. So you can make the decision which direction you want to go in. Uh, this is your first move of 10, so make sure that you pick the correct move. It'll be in either direction one, two, three, four, five or six based on that little image that we shared. All right, I will give you just a second to make the decision. All right, it looks like six is very quickly pulling ahead. All right, we're going to move two spaces to what is the uh, northwest. So we're going to move two spaces to the northwest. All right, you are now, you are four tiles away from the nearest, uh, the nearest objective. You have moved, you are about six tiles away from the second closest objective, and you are now nine tiles away from the final one. So you are definitely closer to, to two objectives. Hi, Fairbone, how's it going? Perfect. So where would we like to go next? Oh, I should also note, Janutes, thank you for calling that out. Um, the, the map, though it is a beautiful image of the surface of Mars, don't let it uh, fool you too much. Uh, the locations of these objectives are not related to the actual image. Um, we're just using it as our game board. All right, so for our second move, what are we feeling? Hi, Fearbone. It looks like five is very rapidly pulling ahead. So I think we're going to go in the direction of five, which is going to be uh, due west. So we're going to move two spaces due west. Let me move you over two spaces. All right, you are now within two spaces of one of the objectives. You are four spaces away from another objective. And you are three spaces away from a bonus and three spaces from a hazard. Where should we go next? It's almost, it does kind of feel like that very, very old Minesweeper game. You know, I'm amazed that you still find that on computers. It's the, like, 2030s. You'd think they would, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's time for a reboot. Thank you, April. All right, let's see. It looks like five has pulled ahead again. All right. 
So we're gonna move five spaces over. That will put us, all right, two spaces away. We are now, we are two spaces from an objective. in both directions. Well, in two directions, not both directions, two directions. We are one space away from a hazard. And we are now five away from the nearest bonus. Which direction would you all like to go? You think six is where the hazard is? Maybe. Maybe not. You have to find out. Hmm. <laughs> All right. It looks like four is the direction that we want to move in. I do not fear this. <laughs> All right. Well, there, so you've gone, you've gone down four and you've actually, because you've hit something, it only moves you one space. So you have landed on a glacier. Now let me tell you a little bit about this hazard because now you've landed on it. So don't don't worry too much because like all of our astronauts on on Mars, we we do have to adapt, live, thrive. Uh so a glacier actually tells you that fuel is nearby. And it also helps tell you exactly the direction that you need to go in but it does cost you a turn. So <laughs> you're now one space away from the fuel and you are, and I can just tell you this, you are currently located to the northeast of where the fuel is. So you lose one turn, but you do know exactly where it is and uh, you can grab it. Now that you've gone over this hazard, it won't be a hazard for you anymore. So you lose one turn, but, so you are currently northeast of where you need to go if you wanna get your fuel. It looks like you guys have figured out which direction to go in. <laughs> so you all have picked four. <laughs> And you are correct. So you have landed on the fuel. Congratulations. Uh, so now you are on the fuel. That puts you that puts you at now your So technically that is registered as your sixth sixth turn. Um, because you have lost one turn. It's very exciting. Congrats. All right, so now it's time for our seventh move. Uh, if we go backwards, so no, so if you go backwards, now that you've triggered the uh, the hazard, you can go ahead and go over top of it and we'll just, you've already experienced the hazard. I'm not gonna make you do it again. So currently in the location that you are, uh, you are located where the fuel is. You are currently, four spaces away from the next resource. Um, so you can go in any direction that you want in order to get to your next resource. The hazard of the glacier is gone, so you don't have to worry about the hazard of the glacier. Um, you are also seven spaces away from a bonus if you choose to go that way. Uh, so go ahead and pick on Stephanie's message which direction you wanna go in. And as one more time, as a reminder, you can go backwards if you so choose, and you will not be docked a point or a, a move again. All 
All right, let's see, let's see. Oh, it's pretty even. All right, I'm seeing ones. It looks like one is kind of pulling ahead. All right, I'll give it. All right, I see one pulling ahead. So we're going to head two spaces back up uh, in the direction of like past the glacier. You are now two spaces away from the next resource. So now, which direction do you want to go for your eighth move? You are two spaces away from the next resource. You've already collected fuel. You're getting quite close. What are we thinking? All right, three looks like it's kind of pulling ahead. Four also looks like it's pulling ahead. You just came from four, so keep in mind, if you click four, you're going right back in the direction that you were on. <laughs> yes, let me, uh, MC, would you mind uh, sharing the map again just to show where they are? You guys have technically already been on the spot that you're sitting on right now uh, in a previous run before you hit the glacier. Perfect. So you are you are one spot right above where the glacier is. Beautiful. All right. So it looks like the winner right now is six. <laughs> Let's chill here a while. <laughs> All right. You move two spaces, number six. You are now still two spaces from the objective, moving into your ninth move. So you were two away before, you're two away now. Where would you like to go next? Oh, two is a very, very quick winner. Uh, Fearbone, to answer your question, every move until you are within one space is two spaces. So once you are, if you were, let's say, one space away from an objective, your next move would just be one space so that you don't get too far away. Uh, but a standard move is two. All right, it, two is the clear, clear winner. So we're going to go two spaces, uh, which is two spaces over to the east. And sure enough, you have found your ore. Congratulations. That is really impressive. You guys did a great job. Uh, Mozzie, it's it's a party game that's based on the uh, the prototype experience that the ISA is putting out. You guys, you all did it. I'm so proud of you. Well done. Now, technically, You, you do technically have one more turn if you want to go one more turn. There's still a bonus that's quite close. There's a bonus that's three spaces away. So you could, if you wanted to, if you, if you guess this right first, nothing is reachable. If you, if you guess this right, you will be so close to the bonus that You'd have to get this first one correct. If you are able to guess this first direction correctly, uh, then I will give you that extra one space. You can move the three. <laughs> I'm, a bele I'm benevolent. I can <laughs> let you try it. But you have to pick the right direction. If you move in any direction that is not the exact direction that you must go, it won't count. I know, <laughs> Tronity, I, I feel you. I'm sweating for you. <laughs> it's all in. 
It's all in. So this bonus would add a half point to your score. So you've gotten two objectives. This would get you an extra half point. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. <laughs> so it looks like it looks like 3 is pulling ahead. Is that your final answer? <laughs> it's all it's all coming down to this moment. Is 3 your final answer? <laughs> No, it's not your final answer. I like one. <laughs> I would go with six. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> not three. Not three. I like one. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you. Oh, now two is pulling ahead. We think two? Three is no good. Three back to nothing. I got nervous. I'm sorry. I feel you, Trinity. Can I phone a friend? Who would you phone? <laughs> Would you phone me? <laughs> this is such a dilemma. It is such a dilemma. Okay, I'm calling it. You have 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, you all have moved two directions. To the east. And you are one space from your bonus, which means that you did pick the right move. So you all get your extra 0.5 because you did find it. <laughs> You're lucky I'm benevolent. <laughs> you all were just so close. So congratulations, you all did a great job. Now, of course, the actual prototype is not going to let you have a little bit of an extra push in that way. Um, but uh, I hope this kind of gave you an idea of what it will be like. Congratulations, you all did a phenomenal job working together, communicating with one another. Uh, it also won't have any hazards, that's true. So you, you really won't have to you know worry about running into glaciers while you are helping with the prototype. They've put you in a pretty safe spot. For, uh, but teamwork, teamwork does make the dream work 100%. I love that. Go team. Oh, your, all of your GIF usage is incredible. Um, well, thank you all so much for doing this. I also just want to say, hi, Bright Eyes. It's nice to see you again in chat. Um, hello, hello. So with all of that being said, I hope you had so much fun. Uh, maybe we'll get a chance to... Uh, to do something again like this soon. And if not, then you all are going to get an opportunity to experience the less party game version of this prototype uh, while you are helping the ISA and helping our drivers like, well, specifically Ida, which is fantastic. Um, I had actually so much fun uh, working with Ida this past few weeks um, and getting an opportunity to do all of this behind the scenes. Uh, I've been so excited to, to share this all with all of you. Um, so I really can't wait to uh, see it all come to fruition and see you all get a chance to experience it. At this point in the broadcast, right at the end, we were interrupted with a message from Alex in the ISA communication channel that we have open. Um, Alex shared the following message, and I'll just read it to you all who weren't there with us live. Alex said, Shifters was listening to show while watching Ida's readouts. She's out like every day testing remote survey system. Only screen just went black. No telemetry from Rover. Sent a screamer. Mithy and MC2 are working on the problem. Ida is two hours from base. Last readout on suit said 95 minutes of oxygen. If Rover was an accident, if there is cockpit breach or suit breach, well, you know what John says. Mars is always trying to kill us. Update. Midi has Corey running our fastest drone out to the last known position. Should be an area maybe 35 minutes. We'll update here when I can. You are part of the team. Now we are here on Earth 
60 million kilometers away as they try to find a way to save one of our astronauts who will run out of oxygen before the rescuers can possibly reach her. Here on Earth, we're waiting and hoping there is something that we can do to help. With that being said, I will be making sure that we update in our ISA communication channels, and I will see you all next week for next episode of The Redshift, hopefully with good news.